so what we want to do or well look at briefly is what i do in my adaptive control course and this is uh, backstepping adaptive control okay so you already know what is backstepping so uh, it turned out that actually the name backstepping i told you right it came from the kkk kanalakopoulos kokotovich christic actually christic i guess uh, named it as backstepping the method was sort of known before that so uh, and he is one of the one of the key researchers in the area of adaptive control okay so the entire uh, concept and utility of backstepping came from adaptive control yeah so not the other way around although it seems like we are doing the other way around so we already did for the nonlinear system case backstepping ideas very powerful yeah you can easily construct sequentially clfs and do a lot of things yeah in fact even automate it if you can i mean you can do symbolic uh, symbolically keep generating new functions if you don't want to keep track of the complicated terms yeah so backstepping like i said came from adaptive control so obviously it makes sense that it is very applicable in adaptive control so modern adaptive control is using uses a lot of backstepping okay so what is this um we will not look at all these i mean what they mean and so on so i'm not going to uh, sort of worry about this um worry about trying to explain this because this is an adaptive control course so obviously there was more material here um so backstepping obviously is a method for generating strict lyapunov functions or the way we said it is control lyapunov functions okay control lyapunov functions and strict lyapunov functions sort of the same things yeah um basically uh, v dot is negative definite yeah for any clf you will see v dot is negative definite that is how it's defined in fact so that's what is called strict lyapunov functions when you take a v it is nice and positive definite and all that and the v dot is negative definite then it is a strict lyapunov function yeah and we just saw spring mass damper sort of example where even though we know that the system is asymptotically stable the v that we designed or chose yeah did not have a negative definite uh v dot okay so those are not strict lyapunov functions okay they usually give trouble in adaptive control they are not nice for adaptive control yeah so which is why backstepping is so popular because ba adaptive control requires clfs or strict lyapunov functions okay great so suppose we have this non linear double integrator we saw a double integrator now we have a non linear double integrator and this is where we have the unknown appearing okay you see that this is uh this is only one function this could easily have been summation of theta i star fi plus u right it could have been very easily that so that could have been like a function approximator if you may yeah so um so it doesn't matter if there is one or 10 or 100 and so on you can still use adaptive control ideas for this yeah but this is the unknown yeah this could be again inertias or parameters for identifying a general function yeah with with these f being the basis functions and so on yeah but what we want to do is we want to achieve some kind of a tracking for this we want to achieve some tracking results all right so that's what i say so everything is in real so i'm keeping the presentation simple of course so everything is real numbers um f is of course a map from the state and the time to the state again yeah or or, or whatever or the vector the derivatives again all right so what is the objective is tracking right what is tracking it means that i have a signal r and the position follows the r velocity follows the r dot because i have this matching kind of a requirement okay so the trajectory also has to satisfy this okay so the velocity is derivative of position all right great so what is the dynamics for the errors now yeah this is what we've been doing for the tracking problem right we construct an error we write the dynamics of the error what is the error dynamics e1 dot is e2 comes by virtue of the matching condition right and e2 dot is just x1 uh what x1 double dot or whatever x2 dot minus r double dot right so x2 dot is this minus r double dot okay so this is my new dynamics that i'm working with right i still have an unknown if i did not have an unknown i would simply cancel this guy cancel this guy introduce the nice terms that i wanted okay all right all right so i already said that this is a badly upon a function for this system right it leads to what is called detectability obstacle 
so we will try to use backstepping to construct Lyapunov functions here yeah because you know that this is a non strict Lyapunov function even for the known case yeah you have seen the spring mass diagram all right what do we do standard backstepping right uh, we have e1 dot is e2 we assume that the e2 is the control so we design an e2 desired what is the e2 desired in this case just a minus k1 e1 right you are just trying to make this go to 0 exponentially then this is a good enough system to follow ok all right. So, if I did that great and what would be the corresponding Lyapunov candidate Lyapunov function it is half e1 square right because with half e1 square and this dynamics right I get v1 dot s minus k1 e1 square yeah. So, this is what yeah, is for the first stage for the first system this is the Lyapunov function right. Now, I will augment it right using the backstepping error and so on. So, what is it all of this happens when e2 is exactly equal to e2 desired which is not possible yeah so, we do not control e2 itself yeah. So, he construct the backstepping error ok what is the backstepping error it is this e2 minus e2 desired because we cannot make e2 equal to e2 desired we try to drive e2 to e2 desired this is the idea of backstepping ok. So, what is e2 minus e2 desired it is e2 plus k1 e1 yeah and this why denote as psi 2 ok this I denote as psi 2 psi 2. So, now one of the questions that I ask uh, which anyway we also answered in backstepping I believe that does this mess with the original control objective the original objective was to drive e1 and e2 to 0. But now with the new dynamics my objective will be to drive e1 and psi 2 to 0. So, what happens is that if indeed e1 and psi 2 go to 0 e1 goes to 0 and psi 2 goes to 0 me but in inside psi 2 I also have e1 which is going to 0. Therefore, e1 and psi 2 going to 0 is the same as saying e1 and e2 are going to 0 ok and vice versa you can check yeah because this transformation is sort of a non singular transformation it is a nice transformation yeah nice valid transformation of the states ok all right great. So, you have the first state e 1 and you have the backstepping error state psi 2 and I take the derivative of psi 2 to find the dynamics yeah and I get this guy yeah it is just e 2 dot plus k 1 e 1 dot. So, that is this plus k 1 e 2 all right clear ok fair enough. Now, what what do we do uh, what do we add as the new term is the square of the backstepping error right every time when we do backstepping all we are doing is taking the original Lyapunov function and adding to it the square of the backstepping error always this is how we come up with the CLF right this is what we proved in our backstepping result ok great. So, what is v 2 v 2 is half psi 2 squared and what is v 2 dot it is this guy psi 2 times the derivative of psi 2 yes all right. So, right now this the way this is done is we are we are not looking at the v completely as of now. So, as you understand the v for the entire system would be v equal to v 1 plus v 2 right. Uh, we have chosen a control even before we did that analysis we are choosing a control right from here yeah. And how do we choose it basically cancel this guy cancel this guy cancel this guy and introduce a good term ok that is all we are doing this is used this is cancelled this is cancelled this is cancelled and a good term is introduced in the psi 2 ok. This control works ideally I would not recommend doing like this I would say you first do this v equal to v 1 plus v 2 take it derivative then guess the control ok. So, what is let us see what is v equal to v 1 plus v 2 v is v 1 was e 1 squared by 2 right and v 2 is psi 2 squared by 2 right. So, v 1 dot is e 1 e 1 dot v 2 dot is psi 2 psi 2 dot ok all right. So, what is e 1 e 1 dot e 1 dot is e 2 and psi 2 psi 2 dot is because of this choice 
it is minus k2 psi2 squared. Yes? Okay, because I cancelled everything. All I am left with is minus k2 psi2. Okay? Okay? Great. Now, I get this variable e2 which is not my variable anymore, right? Because I did a transformation. So, I want to write e2 in terms of the new variable which is psi2 and e1. I do that. Right? Psi2 is just e2 plus k1 e1. Right? So, I have just written e2 in terms of the new variable. Yeah? And once I do that, what do I get? I get this nice negative term in e1 minus k1 e1 square. I already had the nice negative term in psi2 minus k2 psi2 square. And I also have a mixed term e1 psi2. Right? But I already know what to do with this. We have done this before. We use this that 2ab less than equal to a squared plus b squared for this mixed term. So, this mixed term is basically going to become less than equal to half e1 square plus half psi2 square which is this. Yeah. Okay. So, instead of an equality now I move to a inequality that is it. Alright. Because I am, I am less than equal to is always fine. We are doing the Lyapunov analysis. Right. So, I have minus k1 e1 square minus k2 psi2 square and then this additional term. Okay? But that is pretty straightforward. I mean, um, I can always use k1 to dominate the half, k2 to dominate the half and v dot is negative definite. Right? This is what the entire trick of Lyapunov analysis is all about. Alright? And once I do that, what happens? I know that I have uh, v dot negative definite. What does it mean for uh, v dot to be negative definite? It means that both e1 and psi2 are going to 0, right? Whatever is in v, basically v is going to 0. So, whatever is in v, that is e1 and psi2 are going to go to 0. And we have already proved that e1 psi2 going to 0 is equivalent to saying that e1 e2 is going to go to 0. Okay. So, done. Okay. Now, uh, great. Excellent. Yeah. We have got a strictly Lyapunov function. Why? Because v dot became strictly less than equal to 0. Yeah. Unlike if I if I had taken e1 square plus e2 square by 2, instead of e1 square plus psi2 square by 2, I would have landed in trouble. e1 square plus e2 square by 2 will only give me v dot negative semi definite. Okay. So, we have something nice here. Now, but there is a problem. We in the control, yeah, uh, although here if you see the way this is written, uh, it is written as theta hat, but you see it says theta hat is theta star. Basically, this is a known case, what we call as the known case. If the parameter was known, you can cancel this exactly. Okay. Parameter, if the parameters was completely known to you, accurately known to you, and obviously, you can do this cancellation. Yeah? But now, we are in the adaptive framework. We do not know this parameter. Okay? We know nothing about this. Okay? Then, what do we do? Okay? So, great. So, one nice step is done. We have constructed a CLF. Yeah? And this is critical for adaptive control. Without a CLF, you cannot do adaptive control. Okay? Remember this. Yeah? For the known case, by the way. I am not saying CLF for the entire system after adaptation and all that. I am saying if you, if the, if even when the parameters are known, you do not have a strict Lyapunov function or a CLF for your control system, then you have a problem. You will not be able to use that to do adaptation. Okay? So, even in the known case, if it is non-strict, then in the unknown case, it becomes even worse. Okay? That is essentially the idea behind detectability obstacle. So, even at least for the known case system, you must have a CLF and that is why you use backstatter. Okay. If you have a CLF in by some other means, feel free to use it, no problem. You can guess it without doing backstepping, no problem. Yeah, if you can guess the control Lyapunov function without using backstepping, not a problem. Absolutely feel free to use it. Yeah, But more often than not, you will not be able to guess it. Alright, great. 
So what happens when theta star is unknown? Okay, uh, I've already sort of given a glimpse. What we do is instead of theta star, we use what is called theta hat. Okay, so this is the estimate of theta star. This is called the estimate of theta star. So basically we try to estimate theta star. Okay, we don't because we don't know the value. So what's the best thing we can do? We try to get an estimate. This is what control folks do. What is an estimate? It's like if you've seen Kalman filtering, you have a state estimate. Right? You don't have the true state, but you use some uh, sensor data and you feed it into a filter. Yeah, probably you don't know what filter you're feeding into, whatever, but you feed it into a filter and you come up, you get out what is called an estimate of the state. It's not the true state. Yeah, because you're seeing the world through the sensors. Okay, so there's no real concept of true state. Yeah, I mean, you may have a slightly more accurate state. For example, if I have a bunch of vision sensors with which I'm trying to identify my current location, my current position, X, Y, Z position. Okay, and I do a pretty good job. Okay, but that is still a sensor data, right? But the real, what, what a lot of folks would do is they would try to compare this vision process data to say GPS data or very accurate GPS data. If you have say military grade GPS data, it will have some, you know, sub millimeter accuracy and then you can compare that, yeah, your position given by GPS with, you know, your vision based data, okay. So there's no real true, so all the data, everything, you see the world through the data, right, through the sensors. So therefore, there's always an estimate in world, yeah, in, in the states also, in fact, yeah, although we don't talk about it in this course, yeah, but so the idea is um, here also what we do is we create an estimate for the parameter, not for the state, but for the constant parameter. Okay? This is what is the adaptive control idea. Okay? This part is called adaptive estimation, but it combines with the control, so it is called the adaptive control. It shows up in the control. All right? Okay. Great. Uh, so, we replace it with an estimate, we replace the true value with an estimate and then we try to figure out how to calculate the estimate. Okay, because just like in a Kalman filter, there is a particular logic by which you update the states of the Kalman filter. Yeah, it comes from some kind of an optimality, right? Kalman filter is basically coming from an optimality result. Yeah, so similarly here, it's not coming from an optimality result, I can tell you. It comes from a stability result. Okay, this is also an estimate. Typically in a deterministic systems, that is where there's no probabilistic quantities coming in, estimates or observed states, uh, sorry, actually I would say estimates come from stability requirements, yeah, not optimality requirements. All right. Okay. Great. So what is the stability requirement? We want to drive the even e to do zero. Okay. That is our stability requirement. We want to be able to track even if we don't know the true value of the parameter. Okay. Great. Now what? We create a slightly modified candidate Lyapunov function for the unknown case. We already have a strict Lyapunov function for the known system, V1 plus V2. We add to it a term in the parameter error. I don't know the parameter. Best I can do is try to drive my estimate to the true parameter, right? Okay. Again, same logic by which most of control folks will work. Yeah. What is this? I define this theta tilde, this is a notation that we very standardly use in adaptive control. Tilde denotes the parameter error, theta star denotes the true value, theta cap denotes the estimate, okay, standard in, even in nonlinear control for that matter, okay. Now we take time derivative just like we were doing earlier. What is it? V1 dot is even, even, even dot, so even E2, V2 dot is, okay, now I have to write some terms, I guess, sorry. So, if you remember, this is E1 squared by 2 plus Psi 2 squared by 2, right? So, V dot, if I make this big, that I can write now, V dot is E1, E1 dot plus Psi 2, Psi 2 dot plus actually minus theta tilde 
theta hat dot divided by gamma. So this gamma is some positive quantity. Gamma is just a positive scaling called the adaptation gain. Okay, so basically controls how fast you will update the parameter. That's it. Okay, so if you notice the last term had a negative here. Why? Why does the last term have a negative sign here? Huh? Yeah, theta minus theta hat and this is a constant. So, the derivative value is to 0. So, this is minus theta hat dot. Okay, simple. All right, nothing too complicated. Now, I am going to write the terms, right? This is E1 dot E, E1 E1 dot is E1 E2 just like before plus psi 2 psi 2 dot. Psi 2 dot was what? Theta times f x t uh, plus u minus r double dot. Yeah, and I keep the last term as it is. As it is. Now, what did I choose my control as? I chose it to cancel these terms tried to cancel this term by saying theta hat f x t. Yeah. So, these two terms I can still cancel. Right. If you see the control, yeah, it is this, right? right. So, this term will still cancel. This term will still cancel. The nice term will still appear. Yeah. But this term will not cancel. Right. So, what will I be left with? Correct. So, this is where the theta tilde shows up. This is basically, yeah, that is basically how I get from here to here. Yeah, because the control will have a theta hat. This will bring a minus theta hat f and minus k1, k2 psi 2. So, theta minus theta hat f is theta tilde f and that is this guy. Okay. Yeah. If any confusion you can just do it on your own and see. Yeah. So, that is it. From here I go to this step. Alright. Now what? Now it is not that difficult. Now what do I do? I of course substitute for E2 because I want to write everything in terms of the new variables just like I was doing earlier. Right. So, I am left with E1 psi 2 minus K1 E1 square minus K2 psi 2 square. And I do one more thing, I, you see that now this term theta and this term both have theta tilde common, right. So, I take the theta tilde common and I use this theta hat dot to cancel this. I can, if I choose theta hat dot as gamma times psi 2 f, yeah. Absolutely, that is our estimate, right? What, what I, so, I have just written it here if you see. All I have done is I have taken these two terms and I have taken theta tilde common, right? And this gives me an, an something in theta hat dot, right? What do I do? I cannot make this negative definite. Remember, I do not know theta tilde. So, I cannot give something like minus k theta tilde or anything like that because theta tilde contains the unknown. It is a parameter error. I do not know it. Okay. So, the best I can do is make this 0. That is the best I can do. I will try to make this 0 because I cannot make this negative definite. Right. And how do I make this 0? By this choice. Okay. Yes cannot make this negative definite in adaptive control because theta tilde is unknown. Otherwise, you will have to have a minus k theta tilde which is not allowed. Right? It is an unknown. So, that is not possible. So, the best I do is I make this 0. Okay? So, this is gone and what do I have here on the right hand side? You see, I have all known quantities. Right? Gamma is known to me, some adaptation gain. This is why I said it is adaptation gain because it sort of uh, gives you the rate at which you are adapting and then psi 2 is the second state it is just E 2 plus 
k1 e1 so i'm assuming that you are measuring the state so you know this and then f is just some function if you're thinking at a, in neural networks is just basis functions some basis function so known to you obviously even if it's time varying it doesn't matter but it's known to you okay so once you have cancelled everything you are left with what k1 e1 square k2 psi2 square e1 psi2 notice v dot looks exactly like the known case yes i started i mean even though i started with a more terms in v i ended with the same v dot this is why starting with non strict lyapunov functions will land you in trouble okay if only e2 was appearing here then you will have something like this this will be a big problem for you okay so in adaptive control the way we do it the v dot looks exactly like the known case okay so looks exactly same as known case v dot okay even if you started with a additional term in v okay now what can you say about this v dot now definiteness of course you can do this ab less than equal to a square b square and all that right what about this definiteness negative definite is this v dot is this v so is v dot negative definite every time you guys make the same mistake <laughs> what i added a new state theta tilde is now a state it's not a right it's a new variable there so v is now a function of three variables but it contains only two in v dot so it's only negative semi definite okay so even if you started with a nice clf with a negative definite v dot for the known case as soon as you move to adaptation your v dot will become negative semi definite why because you had more terms in the v right which were new variables okay yeah this should be very clear in your mind okay when you go to the adaptation you add an adaptive control part your v dot will become negative semi definite and that's what i've written here right so the v dot is negative semi definite right so what does this give you as always from the lyapunov theorem all that you get is uniform stability nothing more okay then of course now we are left with trying to use babel atlam and so on so of course you get from this step to this step also using this sum of square type of result which we have been using regularly all right